least respectful way to acknowledge the incredible uh, contributions of someone like Harriet Tubman. I don't think any abolitionist should be on the face of the money, in my humble opinion. But that's just me. What do you think? <laughs> that's, I don't care if it's in 2020, 2030, 2050. Hell, in 2030, we'll, we, everyone will be using debit cards and bank cards anyway. Very few people are carrying a large amounts of cash anyway. Uh, Tiffany writes, Madam C.J. Walker would be perfect. It, it would be a better fit to me. It would make a lot more money. I mean, a lot more sense. First uh, black female millionaire. It would make a lot more sense than Harriet Tubman. Edward writes, well, Nate, we are not getting reparations. So this is their answer. Shaking my head. Harriet Tubman on a $20 bill, please. Tracy writes, it says that Ben Carson is a brain surgeon with no brain. Yeah, you talk about irony. He's a neurosurgeon who operated on children's brains, but the man's got no damn brains. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, good point, Tracy. Jared writes, Ben Carson's legacy is ruined. Yeah, completely. <laughs> completely. Crutha writes, Bill Clinton balanced the budget and left the surplus. Good point, Crutha. Should we put Bill Clinton on the $20 bill? If we do, if this country does, Black Lives Matter activists are going to be upset. <laughs> Corey writes, and a Gilligan of the Week nomination. Absolutely. Let me put his name on the board. <laughs> wow. Dill writes, playing to his white constituents. Ben Carson is a Gilligan and he's, and he's never been relevant. It's hard to argue against a man. Daryl makes a lot of sense. He makes a lot of sense. Like I said, to me, this is just straight up political correctness. That's what it is. You know, so folks got together and said, you know what? We need a woman on the face of the money, as I've said many times already. And they went with, uh, they decided to go with uh, Harriet Tubman because she got the most votes on some online poll. Did anybody stop to think about whether it would be disrespectful? Again, I don't give a damn if Harriet Tubman's on a $20 bill. What I do give a damn about is if the descendants of Harriet Tubman have more $20 bills in their pockets. That's just me. Ah, uh, We are losing it. This country, man, we are living in the last days of common sense. When, when, when anybody thinks that this is a good idea. I played that clip to you. I played that clip for you from the good folks over at Fusion. They have a YouTube site. They do a lot of good work. Check them out. And, you know, when you when you approach it to somebody and they haven't really thought about it, it's like, oh yeah, well, fair is fair. But folks who you know get a little more cerebral with it, they're like, mm, mm, hell no, absolutely not. I mean, if we're trying to find ways to respect Harriet Tubman, why not Mount Rushmore? Why don't I put a monument on a Washington lawn or you know something that's uh, you know that's revert reserved for the people that are very very much revered. In American culture, but but the money, uh, uh-uh. I mean, people have and will continue to do anything for money. Again, look at the Black Holocaust, slavery. <laughs> look at it. In fact, um, you still have people. And yeah, you still have people who are forced into be sex slaves. Right, that's a big issue right now. Forced into prostitution is another form of slavery. Okay. Why? For that dollar, for that $20 bill. Ah, the more I think about it, the more I don't like it. Crutha writes, common sense can't be bought with money. She's absolutely right about that. She's absolutely right about that. And some people are making a point, well, it should happen in 2020 and not in 2030. It should happen as soon as possible. I don't think it should ever happen. Ever. Uh, from Facebook, Tamar writes, some folks still won't carry it. Watch, shaking my head. They would have all the big bills, 10s. 2030, don't think it's really going to happen. Yeah. Now, you do have some, uh, you know, the backwater bubbles, the hardcore racists. There's a tiny part of me who feel as if they might be irritated by the fact that Harriet Tubman is on the currency. And there's a tiny part of me that likes it for that reason, just because it will irritate them. I mean, I can see some of these good old boys. Oh, I'm not a racist. I'm not carrying any $20 bills. 
There's a part of me that feels that way. <laughs> Missy from Facebook writes, damn, black folks can't be happy about ish. People said we never have had a black president. And then when we get one, y'all talk about him worse than white folks. We have accomplished a lot more than the Native Americans and Hispanics in this country. And we're still complaining. Everything is a damn conspiracy, she writes. I'm happy that I will finally get to see a black face on some money. Shh, it's been a long time coming. Now, if they had picked a white woman, y'all would be complaining about that. Bump that. I'm happy for all the strides and accomplishments my people make. We still have work to do, but so far, we are doing an awesome job. That's Mitzi from Facebook. What do you think about what Mitzi from Facebook had to say? Do you agree with her? Is this just another example of black folks are never happy, always complaining? Because you know there are some black folks like that. You know that. I know that. I disagree with her. I, I, I'm i struggling to figure out how this is like some big recognition considering the context and the life work of the person that we're talking about. What about Madam C.J. Walker? I think that's a much a pro, more appropriate woman, black woman, to put on the money. Why is she significant? Not because she was uh, lifting the yoke of slavery. She wasn't an anti or an abolitionist that I know of. Maybe she was. But she is significant because why? She was clocking G's back in the day. Nuri writes, damn, just turned in. What did I miss? You missed a lot, Nuri. We've been talking about everything, but primarily the fact that some folks came up with the god-awful idea of putting Harriet Tubman on a $20 bill. And I've just been elucidating uh, the audience to my own opinions and kind of running down the list of my thoughts about it and sharing many others. Missy just went off on Facebook. She went off on everybody that thinks it's a bad idea. She even dragged Obama into it, okay? People not happy with the first black president. Had it been a white person, y'all be saying, we need a black person. Yeah, but maybe she's right about that. I'm just saying, can we get another black person? (laughs) Why does it have to be, uh, you know, on some level, it kind of softens the blow of racism on some levels too. You know, by absorbing the work of her, of of, of Harriet Tubman, and then enshrining her on the currency, kind of, I don't know, it kind of lessens about everything that she worked for, in my humble opinion. That's just me. Am I going too far with it? You tell me. Missy Hollywood says, you're right, Nathan. Am I right? Missy just went off on me. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) she didn't use my name, but I get the message. Uh, Gary writes from Facebook, I don't see it as a big deal. Sabur writes, we might not agree on OJ, but I agree with you here. OJ was guilty as hell, man. Y'all need to stop. Dr. Earl of Fight Hutchison writes, uh, it's an academic point. It's not official yet. And even if uh, she makes the final cut, the change is not scheduled until 2030. No 40 acres in the mule, but you can get the $20 bill with Harriet Tubman on it. Yeah. So Bull writes, this is a pacifier for black people. There was a cop who just got away with murder. Uh, This was just yesterday. Yeah, he was acquitted. He was actually found guilty and got no time. We'll talk about that this morning. Listen, if you're just tuning in, good morning. Welcome to the show. My name is Nathan Ivey. And as usual, we're talking about everything. People, politics, pleasure. I'm going to take a quick break and come right back to you. And we'll continue the conversation right after this. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. So you're giving up, just like that. Giving up on what? I'm getting an inheritance from a distant relative. Don't you think if there were a billionaire in the family, we'd know about it by now? Listen to me. We are one phone call away from riding horses on our own private polo grounds. One call from christening yachts, having a butler using summer as a verb. How do you figure? Look, everyone's got a rich uncle somewhere. It's statistics. So the best thing you can do is just prepare for the inevitable. Right. Which is why I thought maybe it would be smart to take control of my finances. You know, start using a budget, get out of debt, set some retirement goals. Budgets? Debt? You watch your mouth. Retirement shouldn't be a goal for us. It should be a way of life. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. 
It only takes a minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. And you can do it at doihaveprediabetes.org. But you're probably not going to. Nope. I'm sure you've got a perfectly good excuse. Kids, work. <laughs> I get it. You're busy. So what better time than now? Let's begin. Raise one finger if you're a man. Ladies, none yet. Oh, count in your head if you're driving. Now, three more fingers for everyone over 60, two over 50, one over 40, one more if you're not physically active, another finger if anyone in your family has type 2 diabetes, another if you've got high blood pressure, if you're overweight, raise another finger, two if you're very overweight, and three if you're really overweight. You've just taken the world's first audio pre-diabetes test. And if you're holding up five or more fingers, visit doihaveprediabetes.org or talk to your doctor. There's no excuse because prediabetes can be reversed. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. Good morning. Currently 7.42 a.m. in the Queen City. My name is Nathan Ivey. A podcast will be made available of this show immediately following the show on my website, nathanivey.com. And good morning to all the folks in the chat room. I see the real Terrence Howard. He writes, some acts of kindness are just smoke screens. Absolutely, T. And Kush is hilarious. He says, Bambooty has to step down. Bambooty? Bambooty, Jahooty. <laughs> You're wrong for that, Kush. Bambooty? I don't think I like that, Kush. That is not funny, man. That is not funny. I am chuckling against you, not with you. <laughs> Step down from what? The Zulu Nation. Is that a real thing? <laughs> is that a real thing? Africa Bambada, he needs to be brought to justice. See, the real conversation about this story is the fact that there's a statute of limitations in the state of Washington. I'm sorry, the state of New York. And it, at your 23rd birthday, if you were molested before that, you've got no legal or civil recourse. That's the real conversation. Or it should be a part of this conversation. <laughs> Bam booty. Let me scroll down, man. <laughs> I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> yes, it seems like it's... Again, I believe this individual. I don't think anybody's trying to drop a dime or somehow take Bam See, I was going to say Bam Booty, man. Bam Bada out of circulation. Nobody's checking for the Zulu Nation. Y'all need to stop. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. If you missed it, though, here's the clip of a man. His name is Ronald Savage. I mean, just listen to his voice. You can hear the sincerity in his voice. When I'm having, when I'm having sex, it's, it's like you can't initiate, touch, like, touch me. I have to know that you're going to touch me. And when you go to touch me, it's like I had to, like, brace myself. This is during, like, a sexual encounter. I would have to brace myself just for you to touch me. Uh, come on now. That, he's got to brace himself for the rest of his life? And in that interview, he talked about how Africa Bambata, Bambooty to some people, got on top of him. Oh, my God. Have you seen pictures of this man? I mean, that's nightmares for anybody. I'm not judging folks, but damn. They got some kind of weight restriction. You can't work out and be a part of Zulu Nation or something? Are you, you anti-working out? Is that the man's weight train? I'm not going to the man's gym. Ain't no white man's gym. Is that the issue? Come on, man. What happened? <laughs> what happened? That is not see. I, now I, I can't listen to plant none of that stuff. I can't listen to any of the stuff I used to listen to because same thing with R. Kelly. I got to put Africa Bombada and all his many hits right up there with R. Kelly, right on the shelf with Bill Cosby. No more Cosby show for me. I have to I have to disavow these things because and is it is it just me? I start to feel like I'm somehow an enabler. I don't know how some of you folks do that. Like, y'all just stepping in the name of love. Like, you don't know you're listening to a pedophile. I mean, if Jared gets released and he does a TV show, I can't watch it. I will not be watching it. <laughs> That's just I me. Mean, you got to have standards. 
Brittany writes, Nate, come on. We don't want to picture that in our mind.